Friends, today we are going to upgrade the Artillery X4 Pro, so let's get cracking. Really quick, first things first, if you're not on the Facebook Artillery Sidewinder X4 Pro user group, I do highly recommend it. The project we're going to use is under-featured, and it's right here. It is a do-it-yourself fan duct upgrade for the X4 Pro or Plus. If you try this out, you will have enhanced heat dissipation because of more air outlets. The shape of the air duct is changed so that the model will not be scratched during printing and the nozzle position is exposed so we can clearly observe it. You also get decreased noise from the extruder. Here you can see some comparison images. There is the much better view and this is the larger vent. To find the project, you can simply follow the link. There is an STL file. There are also pre-made sets of G-code and then finally, there is the assembly instruction. If you double click, you can check this out in detail. I'm going to just do this for you. You do have to have your own M3 16 and 18 screws. They mentioned that it can be printed with PLA or PETG. I'm going to print it on my Bamboo Labs printer because I've got ABS loaded and I prefer using ABS for this project. If you've never seen the Bamboo Labs printing process, I'll show you that super quickly. Of course, I went under supports. I enabled supports. I want to use the tree supports. I'm also going to right click and make sure that I've got the ABS filament. There is my generic ABS. Of course, we're going to slice plate. They do mention do not change the orientation. And after slicing, check it out. There are the supports. Love how frugal that is. And I'm simply going to hit print plate, double check the ABS and confirm. Looks like it's going to take about three hours. It does take a moment for the project to download. Once it does, of course, we can hit play and monitor the process from afar. So with the printing completed, now you can see the better airflow and the better look at the nozzle. All right, before we get started, I'm going to unplug it. Just no reason to have it plugged in. I am going to warn you that this has a fan connector back here. We want to be very careful. The length is pretty short. You just don't want to snap that off. Simply remove that screw and that screw. And then as I mentioned a moment ago, we were only going to pull this off and set it right beside that cable's really tight. If you got super small fingers, you may be able to take the cable off safely that way. I instead choose to take off the extruder. It only takes a moment and gives us much easier access. Once those three screws are loosened, you can simply pull it out of the way. And now you've got easy access to remove that cable. I'm going to reach in here with tweezers to make sure I grab the connector and gently pull it straight out. You never want to pull it by the cables. Bingo. Removed. Now when I picked that up, I had two little pieces of plastic fall out. I'm not exactly sure where they connect, but obviously they were connected somewhere. Now we just need a Phillips and we can easily remove those screws. Now I can give you a much better view of how much more airflow this new system will have. As you can see, it's on both sides. The top doesn't change a whole lot, but if we look at the bottom, we've got a much better view of the print head. The second part of the print is this isolation hole. If you've got your power cord to the right, this one goes in the top left. Notice the fan is to the left of this bottom hole. and it pushes in just like that. Now we can simply grab this and stick it down in the hole. Notice it snaps all the way down in there flush. And then we simply need to screw it in with a couple three millimeter screws. You do need to have your own screws. This side is supposed to have an 18 millimeter M3. This side over here needs a 16. 
and then of course simply tighten them in. And now we can reassemble. I've got my little tweezers that help me get a grip. Do make sure you've got it turned the correct way. And get it inserted. Of course, now we repeat the steps to get the extruder installed with all three screws. Finally, get our cables aligned and reattach the main screws. Bingo. Friends, today we're going to start this print a little different. I'm going to use the fluid interface, and I'm simply going to reprint a design from yesterday. I also noticed that my Z offset was not quite how I want it, so I'm going to move over here to the 0 .01, and I'm going to move it up five clicks. Just to see if that works out better. That is one of my favorite things about having a clipper-based printer is being able to quickly find projects I have completed and simply reuse them. As you can see, the job has been sent to the printer. Bingo, first test complete. If you're interested in this project, of course it is a cool little clip that you can make in Tinkercad in minutes. And I'm really pleased with the outcome of test one. Finally friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course friends, don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching, have a great day.